Hi there, it's um, Marcus here from Forpos, uh doing a video on Bill of Materials today. Bill of Materials is normally referred to or can also be referred to as recipe, uh, recipe costing, uh, production, all sorts of names. Um, but it basically refers to a product that is made up of many other products. So if we go into Forpos itself, um, I've created one item called Burger uh, on our system. Now, in this video, you'll see that we refer to food, uh, but it also applies to any and all other products that m gets made up of components. In other words, um, we have customers that makes brooms, and they will have a bit of material for the handle and a little steel clasp that comes around the, uh, the broom bracket at the bottom or the bracket itself. Uh, they might have some screws in there. They might have the plastic packaging of it, etc, etc. There's no limit on how you set up your bill of material. Um, you could also link what we call um, product upon product or bill of material item or recipe upon recipe, things like that. So let's start off with a burger itself. I just want to show you what I've done so far and then we'll build on to that idea. Um, so we've got a, a burger bun, um, which is a product in our system, uh, and I've specified the quantity of one here. Uh, the cost at the moment that it's entered in the system is 1.13. Uh, again, Forpas is multi-currency, so you, that might be 1.1 dollar, might be 1.1 rand, kwacha, pula, uh, whatever the, the currency is that you use in your country. Uh, the burger patty itself as well, um, 5.32, again, a quantity of 1, and tomato of 0 0.1. Now, tomato uh, I specified here as per kilogram, so 0 0.1 will be 100 gram. In other words, 0 0.1 of a kilogram, which will give me my 100 gram. Uh, as you can see, you can go up to 4 decimals, um, which is more than sufficient for, for calculating proper quantities. Now the bill of material obviously the purpose of the exercise is to say every time I sell this product as you can see on the left hand side we've got the at time of sale every time I sell the product this item uh, will basically deduct or instruct the system to go and deduct the following products. Now at the moment this bill of material of mine has got four or oh, sorry three products in the bun, the patty and the tomato. So let's go back to the actual ingredients itself, in other words, the bun and patty and tomato, and go and see how we set that up. All right, so let's go st one step back, and let's look at our burger bun. And our burger bun, we specified here quite easily, and we said that we buy this in a uh, in a dozen. Uh, so my burger bun, I could actually go and put in there and say burger, bu uh, sorry, burger bun, dozen. Um, maybe I should just spell that right, hey. Um, and might as well, it's not like if we're going to be selling this product, we might even want to. Customer want to maybe buy just a burger bun on its own. Alright, so the burger bun uh, in a dozen, uh, we can specify like that, just to make it easier for descriptive purposes. Uh, for now, I'm just going to leave it as burger bun because my sales shrink, in other words, the quantity in which I sell it, is quantity of one. This is my list cost, and the list cost is, we've see, we'll see in other videos, always excluding VAT. So that's $13.50. All right. Um, the second product that we have in there was the patties. Just to search for it quickly, let's go to patties. And my burger patties I buy in a box of 50. And my box cost, uh, this is not individual cost, the box cost is $265. Um, if I go to my pricing, for instance, it will see that it comes down to the 532 that we'll see on the recipe itself. All right. And then the last product here was, uh, I'm going to say tomato and tomato kilogram. Um, you can see again, it's tomato kilogram is 38 rand cost. Now, these costs will be updated or uh, fixed, uh, for want of a better word, when I do purchases. In other words, when I do my GRVs, my goods received vouchers, in other words, I'm buying in stock from my supplier. These costs will most likely change, go up and down, 
day by day. As I go up and down, my recipe cost here or my bill of material will obviously be affected as well. All right. So let's go back to our burger then. Um, and if I go and look at my bill of material over here, there is my uh, recipe for a burger right now. You can carry on and do more things on it. You can go and do, as I said earlier, put your packaging in there, the styrofoam holder, etc., etc. In there, you can put butter on there, oil, uh, whatever you use to maybe uh, grill the patty in, whether it's butter or oil, or uh, you've got a uh, uh, whatever products that you add to this to this burger itself. Um, if it's a burger that you sell to a customer, most likely there will be what we call plate mounting on it. Um, plate mounting you can specify as a product or as an item uh, and then have a bit of material for that again. So as I said here, yeah, you can have your main three products and then what you can do is obviously you can have uh, plate mounting and all sorts of other things. Plate mounting just for um, the customers that might be relatively new in the industry uh, or the food industry shall I say food industry plate mounting was always uh, or is always shall I say the the item that is configured as what do you put on the plate to make it look pretty that might be the letters uh, the chips that you put on there uh, tomatoes uh, maybe some greenery etc etc um, and you could actually assign a cost to that if you've calculated it I um, no idea what the current cost would be, but in the good old days, last time around, uh, I did quite a lot of restaurants, or we did like, quite a lot of restaurants, uh, plate mounting was sitting around about 10 Rand, South African Rand then, uh, per plate on a, a main course meal. Um, obviously, that will be much lower, or so on. Definitely worth your while to do the costing and go and say, okay, fine, I don't necessarily want to go and break it down into 100 different pieces, but what you can do is obviously is to go and create a product called plate mounting on your system and plate mounting could then uh, have a sub recipe in other words another list of products the tomatoes the potatoes uh, lettuce uh, parsley whatever items you might want to add on to that all right so for now for for sake of this uh, video this is my simple burger so now if i want to go and expand on that in other words i want to use that as my base and the same could apply to pizza for instance you can go and make a, a margarita um, a margarita is basically your your base pizza uh, with some tomato and then you can go and add all the other items on top of that so the margarita can always be the base and then you add uh, your pineapple your ham your whatever products to make a uh, maybe any other pizza that you might consider all right, uh, whether that's a meaty one with, with meat and salami and all the rest of it on as well. All right, so let's go back and let's go and do a, uh, okay, well, I want to do a cheeseburger, but there is no cheeseburger on my menu. So let me go and create a, a new product now. Uh, so I'm just going to say new item and we'll call it a cheeseburger. All right, and I'll set up my departments. I do not know whether I've got any departments applicable to this. Uh, it doesn't seem like it. So let me go and create a new pricing group, a new department for those items then. And let's call it burgers. Uh, let's go in here and go create some burgers in there. I'm not going to worry about the rounding for now. In the food business, you can't really use pricing matrices, which is what this section is all about here at the bottom. Uh, and simply because your menu is fixed, you can't uh, charge a price for uh, of 20 rand today and tomorrow it's 21 and the next day it's 22 and then down to 90. All right, so in terms of the burgers, remember that this is just a pricing group that I'm creating, not the item. Alright, so let's go back there and I'm going to create my or select my pricing group now, stock group. I don't think I've got any burgers there, obviously. And we'll do some burgers over there. We'll create a stock group called Burgers. In fact, you know, let me rather create a stock group called Sales Items, um, which is. Uh, 
all the products that I'm not really going to keep stock of, right? And let's go and select that over there. All right, so my cheeseburger, I'm not going to worry about a cost right now because the bill of material will calculate the cost for me. And the barcode, I'm not interested in right now. I'm not going to disable it, bear that in mind. Because if you disable it, you're telling the system that you're just not going to use it. So let's call that 35 Rand in my case. I'm sitting in South Africa. Um, and that's it in terms of creating the product. I can go directly to details now and do the bill of materials, but just for the sake of... Uh, all right, so um, I can now go back to a main stock by detail just to keep it similar in terms of where I'm editing my stuff and I can... Uh, my products, I mean, and then go back to burger. So there's, I've got my cheeseburger in there now. And you can see my cost has been added as one rand. But a material, I do not have one. So I'm going to say at time of sale, I want to add a stock item. And the item would obviously be burger. Um, let's just go and see there. And I'm adding my burger. So there's my burger itself. And then it's brought up a, a basic cost for me of 10.24. Um, if I want to add the cheese, for instance, I've caught myself out, and I do not have cheese right now. Not the end of the world. Let's quickly hop out of there, go back to stock create edit, and create a new item. And obviously, I want to go and do cheese slices, maybe, uh, or you might want to cut your own cheese. That's up to you. Uh, pricing group, I'm going to say dairy for now, that's perfect. And stock group as well, dairy would be fine. And I don't have dairy in my stock group, so let me just go and create a stock group for dairy quickly. Alright, definitely not there, just did a double check there quickly. Alright, so dairy will all be my, all my items that comes from my dairy supplier most likely or alternatively products that I would want to put in my fridge uh, and I could call it fridge products so it doesn't really matter on a pack size I'm not going to worry about again cost not worry about next 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 X Up out of there all right so let's get back there now I'm going to go back to my cheeseburger remember so I want to do a cheeseburger go in there and I want to go and add my cheese slices in my bill of material. So my bill of material already exists of a burger, which we know now consists of a couple of other products. I'm adding something to that, and I'm adding my cheese slices. Um, let's go in there, and I say I'm adding one of that. Um, okay, cost for cheese slices at the moment is one rand, which is might be correct might not be correct let me just go and double check i don't think i've set that up properly and again you this is the what you will do on a daily basis you'll play around with your bit of material and make sure it's exactly what you want it to be your stock will be in place properly etc etc all right so let's go back to our cheese slices and my cheese slices again i am definitely not going to buy them one by one i'm most likely going to buy them a box of 100 uh, and my cost on that would be most likely 150 odd rand. Uh, cheese, as we all know, is more expensive than the best quality meat that you can buy. Um, that might be cheddar slices, it might be uh, gouda, it might be any cheese. Let's go back to our cheeseburger now. And in my cheeseburger, if I look at my bill of material, um, I've got a cost of 1 rand 50 added on to that. Uh, if I go look at my pricing, I'm selling the item at 35 Rand. My cost now has been calculated at 1174 and I'm sitting with a GP percentage of 61%, uh, which will give me a food cost percentage if you go and have a look at our 40-40-20 principle uh, for restaurants and stuff. That's within my 40%. So in other words, I'm running a, a 39 or 38 point something uh, percent food cost percentage that's right on target um, I'll be happy with that type of costing and I will can sell my cheeseburgers with confidence now alright and that's basically the bullet material setup hope you enjoy bye bye